If you've listened to this show long enough to catch me slipping into Shakespearean insults and alliterative scatology, you've probably picked up the fact that I'm a bit of a word geek. And if you hadn't, that introductory sentence probably did the trick. So with apologies, I have to address some issues of grammar. And I know that there are plenty of topics in atheism that are far more impactful than word choice and capitalization. But damn it, I've made it 131 episodes without letting a grammar Nazi and me take over a diatribe. And a recent email I got from Lamar made that a trend that was probably impossible to continue. Now, Lamar falls into a category that I call zero-sum atheists. These are the folks that tackle movement atheism with the attitude that we should only focus on the biggest problems and all the efforts to work on the less impactful issues are counterproductive. Now, his email was too long to read the whole thing on air, but I've got a couple of quotes that will give you the gist of it. But Lamar starts his email by chastising us both, Heath and me, and atheism in general, for not showing a proper sense of proportionality between the important and petty issues, his words. And then he lists some examples, quote, Perhaps the two most egregious manifestations of this that I see in the new atheist movement are the insistence on using CE in place of AD and the refusal to capitalize the word God. Here we have issues that are not only petty, they're not even logical. If we're not trying to take the Thor out of Thursday, why take the Jesus out of a Christian-based calendar? And if we're willing to capitalize the name of other fictional characters like Spider-Man and Pikachu, why not God? Skip ahead, skip ahead, skip ahead, and then he concludes, quote, Atheists need to learn to recognize that they're not immune to illogical and emotional arguments, and you're in a unique position to lead by example. End quote. So in response to Lamar, I'd like to start by agreeing that, yes, atheists are not immune to illogical and emotional arguments, and then I'd like to thank him for demonstrating that fact in his email. Because it doesn't matter how many people are on your side on this, Lamar, you're wrong. I, I mean, you, you know, maybe your overall zero-sum point is correct. I don't think that it is, but I'm not in a position where I could, like, definitively prove that it's wrong. But I can definitively prove that the examples that you chose to support it are wrong, and then I can leave it to you to decide what that says about the larger argument. So first of all, it's Thor's day, not Thor is the one true God day. The term Anno Domini means in the year of our Lord our Lord, and thus when attached to the fictional birth year of Christ, when one says 2015 AD, what they're actually saying is 2015 and I accept that Jesus is God. Yeah, I mean, if there was a month called Christober, or if, if we called hump day, Odin could beat up your God day, the analogy would hold, but there isn't and we don't, so it doesn't. And while we're on the subject, by the way, the term CE was popularized by Jewish scholars, not atheists, and it dates back to at least the early 19th century. But even the modern push to use CE in academic circles is far more motivated by religious pluralism than by atheism. You know, I guess it's not enough for the Christians that their Jesus-based system gets to inspire the year that everybody agrees to use. I mean, the academic world could just as easily have used the much older Jewish calendar of a Hindu one, or, or maybe just make up a reasonable one that starts on a thing that actually happened and has 13 28-day months and an extra one on New Year's. Think about it. That would make so much more fucking sense. But no, we all agree to use their fictional Jesus Day, the one that even biblical scholars agree would miss the birth of Jesus by at least three years, assuming he existed. But some people wanted to stop using the, like, Jesus tagline at the end, and that was enough to get them freaking out. The point is, we're not the ones being unreasonable. Neither atheists in general or the specific ones who make a big deal about using the more culturally inclusive term. But that's just an appetizer for the one that really chews on my nuts, and that's the capitalization of the word God. Set aside all the silly shit they do with the pronouns for the moment, because I think we can all agree that that's stupid, but the idea that God should ever be capitalized when it isn't leading off the sentence is just grammatically incorrect. The term God is not a name. It's a title. C compared to the word president, if you're using it in direct address, as in, hey, President Sanders, glad you got elected, yes, you would capitalize it. And if you're talking about presidents in general, you wouldn't. I, I, but even if you're talking about a particular president absent his name, you wouldn't capitalize it. If, if I wrote, I would teabag the president if he asked nicely, I wouldn't and shouldn't capitalize it, even though I'm clearly talking about one particular president. I think we all know which one I would teabag. But, 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 but the point is that the same thing holds true with the word God. The fact that there's a bunch of assholes that think their God is named God is their own fucking problem. It's not even right according to their own religion. His name is Yahweh, or Jehovah, or Jesus, or Allah, or something like that. It's some other fucking name. The idea of capitalizing the title God comes from the same nonsensical construct that has them capitalizing pronouns and shit. But if I say, hey bro, God is bullshit, I'm talking about a concept and it does not earn a capital letter. Even if I say the God of Christianity is bullshit, again, I'm using a title and it doesn't earn a capital letter, even if I'm talking about a God whose name was God at that point. The grammatically consistent thing to do would be to use a small g. Now look, 
I know this isn't the sexiest topic I've ever devoted a diatribe to. Normally, we prefer to hit something with a little bit more emotional heft, or I should say something that has emotional heft for other people. Obviously, I get pretty emotional about this, but for good reasons. The way we communicate matters, and more and more of our communications are done in writing at this point. And it's also worth reflecting on the fact that Christian privilege is so ingrained in our society that it's even embedded in our language so deeply that an atheist would come to its defense. And if nothing else, I also think it's worth taking a minute to appreciate the fact that we can add grammar to the increasingly long list of things that Christians are on the wrong side of.